can't afford what we have now. We have to put America on a debt repayment plan. We have to begin to get the economy going again without some boondoggle stimulus bill that President Obama and the Democrats talk about now. Government doesn't create private sector jobs. The government is doing everything they can to kill private sector jobs. And we all hear politicians from both parties talk about creating jobs. We're not going to create jobs. We won't create enough jobs to bring our economy to the American economy that we all know and love. What we can do, though, is we can extend the current tax rates permanently. How many small business owners we got in here? Raise your hands. Habib, I know is. Small businesses are the backbone of this economy. And I don't think any of us will disagree when I say that the only way we get out of the economic doldrums we're in is going to be on the backs of small businesses. We need to give each small business owner certainty to know what their tax bill is going to look like at the end of the year and also know what their health care costs are going to look like. Because when they have that certainty, they're going to invest in equipment, inventory, most importantly, they're going to invest in people. When they invest in people, it's not rocket science. That's how we create jobs. That's how we bring our economy back. Simple little things like that that Washington can do to get out of the way of small businesses. Healthcare. Habib does a great job with his business in working toward a more market-based approach economy when we talk about health care and health costs. Now, I got a personal link to my stance on health issues. My wife, Shannon, uh, we just celebrated our 17th anniversary in June. Uh, yes, after about two minutes of listening to me, you're all asking why she put up with me for this long. Well, she has. My wife is a 13-year colon cancer survivor. And when she was 26, she was misdiagnosed for months. She was told it was in her head by one primary care doctor. But she's a nurse by trade. And matter of fact, she teaches nursing school at St. John's College in Springfield. So teaching our next generation of nurses. She knew something was wrong. So she kept pushing. We kept pushing because we chose a health care plan that allowed us to do that. Finally, after months, we got to a specialist, a gastrointestinal doctor, who was just convinced he was going to find Crohn's disease when we did a colonoscopy. Well, surprised all of us, he found it too. But because we had the ability to choose our own medical destiny, a week later the tumor was out. She began six months of chemotherapy. And a year and a half later, my 12-year-old boys were, were born. Thanks be to God for that. Our ability to choose where and when to seek medical treatment is something that we should cherish, which is why we need to go to a more market-based approach, find that health care safety net that everybody talks about. The solution to it is not a 2,700-page piece of legislation that none of us can understand even if we read it. I don't know about you, but I get confused enough reading my booklet about my insurance plan that's about that thick. And the solution's a bill this big? No. It's a pathway to a single-payer system. I want to tell you one more story about me growing up. Because like Habib, my parents, my parents achieved the American dream. I was lucky. I didn't know we were poor growing up. My parents grew up on the lower middle class side of Des Moines, Iowa. My dad began working at the very first McDonald's restaurant in Des Moines, Iowa in 1958. While his friends were taking jobs at factories, deciding to get better paying jobs, more long-term security, he stuck with it. He worked his way up. I don't think he became an assistant manager in a month, but he got to be. But he worked his way up, and he stuck it out. And at age 34, he took us from Des Moines, Iowa, to Taylorville, Illinois. I was seven years old in 1977. I didn't know families didn't eat bread and gravy a couple nights a week before I... I moved to Taylorville. I didn't realize that macaroni and cheese wasn't on everybody's table at least two or three times a week. That was just the way we lived. And I really, I did know later when he opened the McDonald's that not everybody ate McDonald's five days a week like I did. <laughs> I, knew, I knew that. 
And when we were on the road, I didn't go to McDonald's. I go to McDonald's more now because I appreciate the sacrifices he and my mom made when building their business up. He achieved the American dream because he stuck it out with a company that provided him that opportunity. Now, today, he and my brother operate Ford. 